Example 3.2. In this case, we have a thin silicon chip and an aluminum substrate, which are separated by an epoxy joint. The information of area of each one of the substrate and the chip are given. The upper part of the chip and the bottom part of the aluminum are exposed to air. The chip dissipates a certain amount of heat flux and under these conditions it's only allowed to operate up to 85 Celsius. Our goal is to determine whether the temperature that it reaches it is higher or lower than that value that it was provided. This is a conduction case which is a steady one-dimensional with constant properties. Some of the assumptions is that it has negligible radiation and that the resistance within the chip is negligible. This is a resistance representation of this problem. The components are the following. The upper part of the chip has convection as well as the bottom part of the aluminum. Then we have conduction in the aluminum component and then we have the epoxy resistance. Please remember that we are neglecting the resistance inside of the chip. The heat fluxes on the problem are given as Q1, which is convection, leaving the system, Q2, which is a combination between convection and conduction, and QC, which is the flux that is being generated by the chip. In order to find out the thermal resistance of the epoxy between the silicon chip and the aluminum substrate, we go to table 3.2. We choose from the given values the maximum value to provide us the highest amount of the resistance. We start the analysis with a balance of fluxes. Notice that we have the flux of the chip going in and fluxes going 1 and 2 leaving the system. Therefore, we could say that the flux of the chip is equal to flux number one plus flux number two. As we indicated before, flux number one is due to convection in the upper part of the chip. Therefore, we could say that Q1 is equal to the differences of temperature around the convection resistance, which is Tc minus T infinity divided by the convection resistance, 1 over H. On the other hand, Q2 is a summation of the resistance due to convection, due to conduction, and to the epoxy resistance. Therefore, we could write that Q2 is equal, once again, to the change of temperatures between those two points. So we have Tc minus T infinity and the resistances between those two points. We have the resistance of the epoxy, we have the resistance due to conduction, and the resistance due to convection. If we plug flux 1 and flux 2 into the equation for QC and solve for the desired temperature Tc, we find the following. Tc is going to be equal to T infinity plus QC H plus 1 over RTC resistance L divided by K, which is the conduction res resistance and the convection resistance. And this all to the negative 1 power. If we solve this value, we find that the Tc is equal to 75.3 Celsius. Notice that this value is lower to the maximum allowable value of 85 Celsius. Therefore, it indicates that for this particular values, the chip will operate properly. Please take the time to go over the calculations and verify these values.